Picture making contact with aliens. Beyond the lights in the sky, beyond the whispers of radio telescopes, a genuine, bona fide hello from the stars. What then? The real challenge wouldn't just be understanding their physics or their intentions, but something far more fundamental, their language. This whole field, sometimes called exolinguistics or xenolinguistics, is, by its very nature, purely hypothetical. We don't have a single alien syllable to study, not one extraterrestrial idiom. Yet, scientists and linguists have dedicated serious thought to it. How could we even begin to comprehend a language that didn't evolve on Earth, that wasn't shaped by human mouths, human ears, or human brains? The legendary linguist Noam Chomsky, known for his idea of a universal grammar hardwired into human brains, was rather pessimistic. He figured that an alien language might be so utterly different from our own inherent linguist framework that learning it naturally would be impossible. We wouldn't pick it up like a child learns to speak. Instead, it would be a painstaking scientific endeavor, like trying to decipher the laws of an alien physics from scratch, a slow, deliberate process of discovery. But not everyone thinks the gap would be entirely unbridgeable. Linguist Karen Rice suggests that if these beings perceive and interact with reality in ways that have some overlap with ours, if they situate things in time and space, if they refer to participants and events, then maybe, just maybe, human language could offer a starting point. There might be some fundamental concepts so essential to any thinking species that they provide a common foundation. Think about the film Arrival. Jessica Kuhn, a linguist professor who consulted on the movie, noted that while the Hepatod's circular, smoky language was a work of art, the method the film portrayed, that careful, pattern-seeking, hypothesis-testing approach, was a pretty good reflection of how linguists would actually try to crack an alien code. It wouldn't be about finding a direct translation for hello, but about understanding the underlying structure and meaning. And there are other intriguing ideas. Lawrence Doyle, for instance, proposed using something called Zipf's Law. In human languages, the most frequent word appears about twice as often as the second most frequent, three times as often as the third, and so on. It's a statistical pattern. If we picked up a complex signal from space that followed this kind of distribution, it might just be a hallmark of language. Any language. Philosopher and scientist Solomon Golem offered another angle. He reasoned that for any species to develop technology advanced enough for interstellar communication, they must have a way to accumulate and pass down knowledge across generations. This implies an inherent understanding that information holds its meaning regardless of who says it or when. Imagine a species where a vital piece of knowledge was dismissed simply because it was uttered by a younger member, or deemed true one day and false the next depending on the speaker's status. Such a society might struggle to build a stable body of knowledge. Golem argued this necessity for consistent information transfer could create a kind of shared linguistic ground, a fundamental respect for the integrity of meaning that we might recognize. Still, the uniqueness of human language, as linguist Ian Roberts points out, is its incredible open-endedness. We can seemingly express anything we can conceive. Are we the only species in the universe with this ability? It's a question that organizations like METI, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, are trying to explore by proactively sending messages out into the void, hoping for a reply, however alien it might be. So, what exactly is language in the first place? Here on Earth, it's incredibly intricate. We weave our thoughts, feelings, and raw information into it. It's not just the words we speak. Think about it. Language manifests as written symbols on a page. The subtle shift in body posture during a conversation. The emotional swell of music. Even the silent understanding in a shared glance. The sheer variety of human languages sculpted by countless cultures, histories, and environments really showcases our species' adaptability and creative spark. We found so many ways to connect and convey meaning. Now, take that concept and stretch it across the cosmos. If extraterrestrial beings are out there, 
their languages, if that word even fully applies, would be molded by realities we can barely imagine. Their biology, for instance. What if they communicate through bioluminescent patterns on their skin, or complex scent trails, or subtle shifts in electromagnetic fields? What if their environment is a crushing gas giant or a timeless void between stars? How would that shape what they need to communicate and how they do it? And perhaps most mind-bending, what if their very methods of perceiving the universe are completely alien to our five senses? This inherent potential for radical difference is what makes the idea of understanding an alien language such a monumental challenge. It's one thing to translate between English and Japanese, which, despite their differences, spring from shared human cognition. It's another entirely to bridge a gap that might span different sensory worlds and conceptual universes. Okay, so we've touched on this idea that alien languages could be profoundly shaped by factors totally unlike our own. But let's really dive into what that might mean. What kind of communication systems can emerge from beings with different bodies, different senses, living in utterly different worlds? Think about their biology for starters. The very anatomy of an extraterrestrial species would almost certainly be a cornerstone of their language. Imagine beings with multiple vocal cords or a whole suit of sound-producing organs. They might communicate in ranges of pitch or through complex harmonies that would sound like a bizarre orchestra to us, if we could even perceive all the frequencies. Or picture aliens with sensory abilities far beyond our own, perhaps an incredibly acute sense of smell or touch. Their primary language might be a complex interplay of scents, releasing carefully constructed pheromonal messages, or a tactile language of pressures and textures. How would we even begin to record, let alone understand, a conversation written in odor or feeling? And who says alien language even needs to rely on sound? In environments where sound doesn't travel well, like the dense pressures underwater or in a planet's thin, wispy atmosphere, Visual languages could take center stage. Beings might use intricate flashes of color, shifting light patterns across their skin, or bioluminescent displays to convey meaning. We see glimmers of this on Earth with creatures like squid and cuttlefish. But an advanced intelligence could develop this into something far more complex. Physical gestures and movements akin to our sign languages could also form the basis of sophisticated communication perhaps involving multiple limbs or body segments in ways that would make our own gestures look like child's play. And then, of course, there's the classic science fiction idea of telepathic communication, where thoughts and emotions are transmitted directly mind to mind. If that were possible, the very concept of misunderstanding might take on entirely new dimensions. Could there be a more universal bridge? Mathematics is often held as a potential universal language. Perhaps advanced extraterrestrial civilizations lean on mathematical concepts for their communication, especially for reaching out across the vastness of space. A language built on fundamental shapes, numerical patterns, or even equations could, in theory, transcend the specifics of biology or local environment. Things like prime numbers or basic geometric forms might be recognizable signals of intelligence, a sort of cosmic, we are here, we understand order. But Let's push the boundaries even further. What if we encounter beings who perceive or even exist in dimensions beyond our familiar three of space and one of time? Their languages might weave in temporal patterns or spatial distortions that are, quite frankly, incomprehensible to us. Imagine trying to understand a sentence whose meaning is conveyed through a precise sequence of events unfolding over time, or by subtle alterations in the very fabric of space itself. These aren't just different words. They're entirely different frameworks for conveying meaning, stretching our very definition of what language can be. So what are the specific hurdles, the real sticking points, when we imagine trying to bridge such an immense conceptual divide? Perhaps the most profound challenge lies in the basic biological and cognitive differences between us and any extraterrestrial species. Our languages are built on what our bodies can do and what our brains can perceive. If an alien species communicates through, say, 
echolocation, using ultrasonic frequencies far beyond our hearing range, we'd need sophisticated technology just to detect their speech, let alone understand its nuances. Without shared sensory systems or even analogous brain structures, the symbols, sounds, or signals that one species uses to convey rich meaning might be nothing more than incomprehensible noise or complete silence to another. Then there's the vast ocean of missing context. Human languages are absolutely steeped in shared experiences, cultural histories, and implicit understandings. Jokes, metaphors, even simple directions often rely on a mountain of unstated background knowledge. Now imagine a species whose entire history, whose art, whose societal structure, whose very understanding of cause and effect evolved on a different world, under a different sun, possibly with entirely different fundamental interactions governing their daily lives. Their languages might be filled with concepts and references that we literally have no framework to grasp. For instance, how would we understand a linguistic element that fundamentally relies on experiencing or manipulating quantum states directly, or one that describes nuances of gravitational waves as casually as we describe the weather? These aren't just different words for things we know. They could be words for things we can't even properly imagine experiencing. But human ingenuity is a powerful force, and we wouldn't face this monumental task empty-handed. Technology could be a crucial bridge. Artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, for example, are incredibly good at finding patterns, even in massive, complex data sets. It's conceivable that AI could analyze alien signals and identify reoccurring structures or correlations that might hint at grammatical roles or semantic units, even if the meaning remains obscure. Advanced translation devices might one day attempt to map alien symbols or signals to rough human equivalents. However, even these technological aids would likely depend on our ability to first establish some kind of common ground. Perhaps through universal mathematical principles as we touched on, or maybe through incredibly patient observation and interaction, trying to link their signals to observable events or reactions. But beyond the technicalities, Beyond the methods and the maybes, the very thought of alien language launches us into some truly profound philosophical waters. If we ever do make that monument's first contact, one of the initial, fundamental questions will be, would we even recognize their means of communication as language? Our definitions are so deeply rooted in our own experience. How do we expand them to encompass something born of a completely different evolutionary path, a different consciousness? And then, if we can bridge that initial gap of recognition, and perhaps even begin to understand what comes next, could a shared, or at least partially shared, understanding foster peace and collaboration across the universe, opening up new chapters of discovery and mutual growth? Or, would the inherent differences, the unavoidable gaps in comprehension, lead to tragic misconceptions, suspicion, or even conflict? The study even the hypothetical study of alien languages isn't just about cracking a code. It challenges our most basic notions of what intelligence truly is, how cultures can form and what they might value, and what connection itself means. It forces us to look at our own languages, our own ways of thinking, and see them not as the default, but as just one possibility in a universe that could be teeming with countless other expressions of thought. This isn't just theoretical daydreaming confined to academic papers or science fiction conventions. As our technology continues its relentless advance and humanity sets its sight further into the cosmic ocean, the possibility of encountering extraterrestrial languages, however remote it might seem, becomes an increasingly tangible prospect. Projects like SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, have been diligently scanning the skies for decades listening for any pattern signals, any whispers that might betray an alien attempt at communication. And it's not just about listening. Linguists and scientists are actively developing theories and frameworks for how we might even begin to interpret such a message if contact ever occurs. The work is ongoing, a testament to our enduring curiosity. The exploration of alien languages is a thrilling blend of science, imagination, and philosophy. It challenges us to think beyond the limits of human experience and consider the boundless possibilities of communication in a universe teeming with potential life. 
whether through flashes of light, resonant sounds, or patterns etched into space itself. Alien languages offer a fascinating glimpse into the diversity of intelligence and creativity that might exist beyond our world. Thank you everyone for watching. My name's The Big Why. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new to the Why Not family, a sub. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.